Welcome to chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. Continues with John uh, being uh, in heaven and seeing these things. And in verse 1 it begins, And after this I saw four angels standing upon the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that they should not blow wind upon the earth, nor upon the sea, nor upon any tree. Again, all of these uh, rose-colored highlights are entities in our book, entities of the book of Revelation. And verse 1 is number 35 in the one of the 100 episodes of the prophet John. Angels uh, mentioned in page 147 of the book, and there is a lot on angels, probably more than any other subject in the book. It mentions uh, in 9, 13, 15, another four angels uh, at the Euphrates River holding back a military that's going to attack. Now, to me, it's either uh, this is a standalone here and it's not the same, or it uh, joins with the four angels in 9, 13 to 15. And the four angels here are standing upon the four corners of the earth. They're not standing at the Euphrates. So I think this is a different four angels. And they're holding the four winds of the earth that they should not blow upon the earth, nor upon the sea, nor upon any tree. Now, I always thought until I've been studying it that they were going to be released uh, to uh, do damage and let these winds go. But now uh, I see that it may be just the opposite. They are holding back uh, the wind from hitting the earth. If they held back the wind, there was no wind upon the earth, then the results would be what happens and we see in 716 with this uh, heat and people trying to get away and find cooler places. And without a wind on the earth, I looked it up in uh, scientific uh, information on it, and it was mentioning that without a wind, you would have no tornadoes, hurricanes, and waves would cease in the ocean. Uh, evaporated air, as it goes up, it wouldn't travel. It would just fall back down into, when it got so heavy, back down into the lake or the sea or whatever it was over. And then dehydration uh, to man, and animals from this lack of water in many places wouldn't be carried there. Uh, would, they would have this dehydration, and fire wouldn't spread as fast, but it would be hotter where it burns. It would stay right in that spot. And this goes along with, to me, as far as what's in 716. The other possibility, which I don't think is the true one, but uh, bring it up, is uh, that in Jeremiah 49, 36, it says, And I shall bring upon Elam, Iran, uh, four winds from out of the four uttermost parts of the heaven. And I will scatter them in all these winds, and there will not be a nation which the ones being pushed out of Elam shall not come. So here the four winds are almost, I'm not exactly sure, the four nations or some type of a military expedition that will cause this to happen. Maybe, maybe not, maybe some other way that it doesn't say. But then in uh, Daniel uh, seven sixteen it says, I, Daniel, viewed in my vision of the night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens uh, struck up uh, in the... Well, now this is the four winds of the earth, so this is different here. The four winds of the heaven struck upon the great sea, and the four great wild beasts ascended from out of the sea, differing from one another. That's Daniel uh, 7, 23. I think I said, gave you the wrong one first. It's Daniel 7, 23. So I believe that the first one is the correct one, that there will not be any wind, and it'll, somehow it will be caused to cease by all these things happening, earth being hit by these stars that it mentioned. It could put the uh, rotation of the earth, stop it, I suppose. I'm not exactly sure what could happen, but I'm not a scientist. And I saw another angelone angel having ascended from the rising of the sun from the east and having the seal of the living God. So this is a very important angel that has the seal of the living God. And he cries out with a great voice uh, to the four angels to whom it was given to them to injure the earth and the sea. So they 
purpose of these uh, the winds was to injure uh, the people, and we'll see later how. It's saying, injure not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we seal the bondmen of our God upon their foreheads. So now there's going to be a sealing. Uh, I mentioned before the wax, the hot wax, and then the uh, the seal itself put, inserted into the hot wax, which makes a seal. And uh, somehow their foreheads are going to be sealed. The people, I'm tattooed, I'm not sure. But then it continues, and I heard the numbers of the ones having been sealed. 144 thousand having been sealed from out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. Now the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, Unification Church, all think they are the 144,000. I never thought I was one of the 144,000 because when it talks about these 144,000, uh, it's uh, detailed in chapter 14. Uh, it says that they... Uh, the name, the name of the Jesus and the Father is on their forehead, so that's what the seal is. And it doesn't say that they were uh, killed, but uh, they sing a new Odin uh, in the heaven. It says they're not tainted uh, with women, they're virgins. They follow the Lamb, and they are first fruits to God and to the Lamb, and the lie is, a lie is not found in their mouth, and they're unblemished. So, I take it literally for what they are. They're Jews, and they're 144,000 from the 12 tribes. They'll give all the tribes here. And these uh, Jews uh, are first fruit. Basically, I think that it could possibly be after the affliction, the tribulation, and um, they will um, be... Um, a, not a cult or a sect, maybe a sect of people. Now, 144,000 is minuscule compared to what we go into next uh, in the, after these names of these tribes of multitudes and multitudes of people wearing the white robes. 144,000 is pretty pathetic, actually, for the amount of uh, Jews that uh, have uh, it's minuscule compared to the others. And uh, now, you might say, well, he's just going back to his anti-Semitic, anti anti-Semitism, and I'm not. I'm really not. I have a lot of good Jewish friends. I have rabbis that buy my, the apostolic Bible. Uh, a Jewish friend is coming over this week and staying with me. I have known Israelis. I love them, and um, I'm not anti-Semitic, even though these uh, things have been used by anti-Semites uh, and it's, but that's not where I'm at. I just ho hope the, that people don't think that, that I am because I'm really not. And I'm not a white supremacist thinking that the white race is the only race that matters and these things that a lot of people twist in the Bible. But 12,000 out of um, maybe millions is a very, very small amount. But yet they are the first fruit. Uh, they are the Jews. And I don't know, after the tribulation, or I'm, if, if there is a... a we, if not if there is, when uh, the, Jesus comes down and in a cloud and he sends a trumpet a sound and, the, uh, and the, uh, the angels to come and take the people on the earth and the dead will come to be with the Lord in the air, then after that, possibly the next group for some reason that will see this and will understand it will be Jews. And then after that, everybody else, that's a possibility that I sort of think is a, is a good one. Now he mentions who they are. For from out of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 having been set seal upon. From out of the tribe of Joseph, maybe Manasseh, 12,000 having been set seal upon. And, uh, 
are Ephraim and from out of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 having been set seal upon. Of course, these are the 12 tribes, the 12 sons of uh, 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 Jacob and um, their names. They might be the, among the 24 elders that it talks about with the 12 apostles. And then it continues and says, And after these things I saw, and behold, a great multitude, which no one was able to count. So the other ones, 144,000, they could count them, 12,000. Here, this is too many. You can't even count them, so there's so many. From out of every nation and tribe and peoples and languages, languages, gloson, tongues is what they is used, um, the Bible, the, some places they literally, people use it for languages, and it's really not. It's a, it's, I mean, they use it for a tongue, literal, but it's a figure of speech for a language, uh, and it's not an unknown. Uh, it's maybe unknown to some people because you don't know it, but you will know it if you know it. And uh, the uh, language is understandable, I believe. It's not gibberish. And they're standing before the throne and before the Lamb wearing white robes. Now here we get the problem I see with the before the Lamb, the throne. Now is the Lamb off of the throne? Is the Lamb or the person that's on the throne? Is it Jesus? And he morphs into the Lamb, as I said. Well, these are just possibilities that I come up with. I take them for what they're worth. And these people are wearing white robes and palms in their hands. Reminds you of the people with the palms laying them in the road when Jesus came into Jerusalem being proclaimed as the Messiah King. And they cry out with a great voice saying, well, deliverance to our God sitting upon the throne and to the Lamb. Oh boy, they are, they're, they've been delivered. So uh, this could be then during the thousand, well, if this, these people are uh, in heaven, now I'm not sure if, I, if it's in heaven or there on earth, uh, he sees them. Uh, I saw a multitude who no one's able from every very tribe are standing before the throne. So it would be they would be in the in the heaven, and they're crying out, and they have been delivered. So they are praising God, and all the angels stood round about the throne and the twenty four elders and the four living creatures, and they uh, fell before the throne upon their faces. And I forgot. Uh, um, yes, yeah, right. No, I didn't forget. We haven't gotten there yet. Nine. Uh, and they did obeisance to God. That is their, on their face. They are laying on their face, and we never hear about people doing that anymore. Uh, laying on your face. Uh, the Roman Catholics have these kneelers, which uh, is halfway down, but uh, we don't do that. The Muslims do, but uh, I think we should. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thankfulness, and honor, and power, and strength to our God, and to the eons of the eons. So they're praising God for all of his attributes. Of, uh, he deserves the blessing, and uh, he has the glory, the glory of God. The, everything the people saw on Mount Sinai, or they, they wouldn't, didn't want to get close to it. He has the wisdom, and the word, and thankfulness, honor, give the honor to God, power, strength. This is what we all give to God. And he deserves all these because he has all these attributes and they're into the eons, the eons, forever, eternal, aeonial, however you want to describe it, but it's going to be forever. It's, never, it's not going to stop. There's no, nothing intimates a, a ceasing of this period. I wouldn't say time because I don't think there is a time. Time ceases. I believe time... Uh, I have an equation for time. It's uh, gamma, which looks like a uh, gamma, a backward, I don't, it's a bracket, a gamma t uh, two theta, which is a, a, an O with a line through it, equals um, chi, which is an X. And that's uh, gamma means genesis, and genesis is birth. Same thing, two uh, theta, Thanatos, death, equals chronos, time. Our time is only between birth and death. Now, time is, continues with other people, but our time is limited between birth and death. That's the only thing I can say. I'm not going to be here. I, was, I wasn't here before my time, and I'm not going to be here after my time, and I'm going to be somewhere else. But that is uh, the time. So an eon 
is also, they call it an age. And an age can be a period of history, or in this case, it's the eons of the eons. So it's more than one eon. It's many eons of the eons, all these eons. But the point is that there's no ceasing of this period of whatever you want to call it. It's not time. And answered one from out of the elders, the 24 elders, saying to me, Are these wearing the white robes, Daniel? Who are they? And from where came they? And Daniel said, I said to him, Oh, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, Well, these are the ones coming from out of the great affliction. I should have had this in the book. I didn't put it in there. Somehow I missed it. 2347, highly recommend to add it into the um, index and uh, the, the word index for affliction and at the end for the number and then find all the places and make your own little uh, entity column. So these are the ones coming from out of the great affliction, and they washed their robes and whitened them in the blood of the Lamb. Well, now I've mentioned before the blood would not make something white. It would make it red, but yet it's a figure of speech. Uh, the, the blood is the sacrifice that Christ gave on Calvary for our sins, and we are white. Our sins are now white. The, we are not uh, guilty and because of this, they are before the throne of God, and they serve to him day and night in his temple. Now, this is a interesting because uh, this place in the, where the throne was at, it, now, is it, is, it, the, is it in heaven, or is it in the thousand-year reign? The reason I say that because it mentions that in the, I think, 22nd um, chapter of Revelation, there's no temple in New Jerusalem. So this cannot be in the New Jerusalem. It has to be either in uh, heaven or it has to be in uh, the th during the thousand-year reign. And um, the one sitting upon the throne shall encamp over them. And that sounds like they've lost their lives, so it sounds like it would be in heaven somewhere. And it could be a special place for the, those uh, people that were, are wearing the white robes, that they are not the same place that the believers, the ones who die in Christ, will be asleep. The ones from the Old Testament will be in Abraham's bosom. So this could be the third place where the uh, these dead will, they're not dead because they're seeing what's going on, and they're giving praise to God. Uh, in this uh, period of time. And they shall not hunger any more, nor thirst any more, nor in any way shall the sun fall upon them, nor any sweltering heat. So here is the idea of this uh, winds uh, being held back. Here it shows the repercussions of no wind that I mentioned. You have thirst, no water, the sun falling upon him and no, no cooling of the, of the winds uh, and the sweltering heat that comes up from the fire that's by you or whatever. For the Lamb is in the midst of the throne, um, for the Lamb in the midst of the throne shall tend them. He shall guide them into uh, springs of waters of life, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. So, uh, they are still seeing the things that are going on from what I can understand, but yet they will. the tears will be wiped away from their eyes or brought into this spring of waters for the, the cooling of the waters. It, and now, number nine, in verse 9, back in verse 9, uh, was number 38, the ones wearing the white robes uh, the, where we saw them. That was uh, number 38 of the episodes of... Uh, the prophet John, and then verse 13, we have number 39 of the episodes. 14, we have episodes 40 and 41. It's all in our book, English Derivatives. And the next chapter we go into, the seventh and the last seal uh, is opened, and we will find out what happens when that occurs. If you join us with uh, a next video seminar and Chapter 8, and God bless.